Real Madrid, taking all three points back from Italy, meaning they remain perfect. Two wins out of two in their group. For Napoli, you would still fancy their chances very much of qualifying second. Despite that defeat, uh, you look at it, Braga and Union Berlin played earlier. Braga coming from 2-0 down to win it by three goals to two. Uh, Gat Marcotti uh, is here, but before we get his views from the Italian side of this tie, uh, Craig, overall, this was fun, wasn't it? It was a good game. Both teams could have actually won it. Yeah, and you saw with the stats here how even it was. Uh, Napoli, I think a little, what's the word I'm looking for? A little lackadaisical and lacking in the now defensively at times and in the middle of the park, leaving themselves a little bit open for that great Bellingham run. The De Lorenzo pass uh, obviously was a poor one from a very experienced international footballer, but it was pounced upon. It was pounced upon and the difference was that, that uh, Real Madrid were clinical and obviously the, the Valverde strike was a tremendous, tremendous shot. But once it comes off the bar, it could go anywhere. It hits the goalkeeper, goes in. So a little slice of luck there. Uh, but yeah, super, super game. Uh, I think you saw with Ancelotti's reaction at the end, he was pretty chuffed with the three points. Yes. Uh, and of course, there's a big story again. And it is, <laughs> you guess who? Uh, Mr Jude Bellingham. And I'll tell you what, what's interesting, Ali, is obviously because the interest injury to Vinicius Jr., mm. we haven't seen those two link up as much, obviously, because they haven't been on the pitch together. But when you see them in full flow, this is going to be some attacking force. Well, yes, it is. Especially Vinny Jr. buys into the idea that he has to play centrally so that he can be closer to Jude Bellingham. And now they can play off of each other. Now, in the case of Jude Bellingham, it's getting to the point now to where if you have Bellingham, you have a chance. Most big timers around the world that have achieved this sort of level, that are playing at this sort of level, they're not slide tackling anybody in, on top of the 18-yard box. This guy is. So I expect the goals. I expect the assists. I expect the impact on the game. But what impresses me the most about him is the leadership, personality, and willingness to do whatever it takes in order to win games, whether that's scoring goals, passing for a goal, when they late. 92nd minute in this match, a slight tackle to keep the shot away from Kepa. And you want to do that because Kepa wasn't all that great today. Uh, best player in the world at the moment, Gav? Ooh, um, Mr. Mbappe may have something to say about that, but uh, I, I, I think he's out there. I mean, I subscribe to everything Ali said, you know. Uh, you, we talk about the intangibles, the leadership, the work rate, blah, blah, blah. Fine, the intangibles are great, but then you also have the tangibles. The man has scored eight goals this season, and he's nominally a midfielder. So there's no question for me, he's he's right up there. Whether whether you'd rather have Mbappe or, or Holland or Bellingham, I'm not sure. I think best on the planet at the moment, just yeah. because it, just because it, he gives you everything, you know. And that's maybe a precursor of his position. Uh, but, but as a midfielder, he has that opportunity, but Mbappe has an opportunity to, to defend more. He chooses not to do so. As Ali mentioned, Bellingham's prepared to do every part of the game, every facet of the game. Uh, and I think if he offered anybody a midfielder at the moment in particular, he's the only one pe people are taking. Look, there's a couple of things here with the goal, uh, the, with the assist and the goal. I think the assist is almost more... Uh, more clever than the goal itself because he waits and he waits and he waits, but he doesn't get himself in too early to deny the pass. Right. He leaves space for the pass from De Lorenzo and then he goes. I think that's important. So he's clever in that respect. The goal itself, I think when Napoli watched that back, as great a goal as it was, and the way he skipped past uh, the defenders in, in, inside the box was magnificent. But if I'm in Giza, if I'm a, if I'm a midfielder, I'm not doing this to let a player run across me 25 yards from goal. I'm taking, I'm at least making a challenge, which he could have made a slight challenge, to win the ball. If I win it, great. If I don't win it, yellow card, free kick. I do not let the most informed midfielder on the planet get into the box and back my centre-halves up. So that was a big mistake. And that's the difference when we saw the stats in this game. Little moments like that where big decisions have to be made. You cannot allow a player of this quality, this confidence in this form to do that. You've got to take one for the team, and Gisa did not, and that allowed Bellingham... Now, 
what he did after that in the box was obviously special. But we know he's a special player, so you cannot allow uh, that opportunity. And I mean, we sit here every time, every weekend we cover La Liga, every weekend and we go, you can't, <laughs> can he keep it up? Yeah. But there's no sign the way that he carries himself. Yeah. It was interesting when in the, in the interview afterwards he was saying, look, I, I, my main role was to facilitate Rodrigo and Vinny, mm. but obviously if they're covered, then I'll, I'm, I'm going to take the run on. Mm. And it's to have that vision and to have that... being able to think so quickly mm. in those situations, which just takes him up to that level. Well, I, there is a lot of clarity to his game. He's seen a very clear picture. He knows what his role is. But that's all fine and well, because we can all have clarity. We can all know what our roles are, but then executing that role and doing it in the manner in which he's doing it. Now, he has a natural skill set that puts him above just about everybody else, but then there's a maturity to his game. And let's not forget, and this is something that we have discussed time and time again, he's only 20 years old and he is the best player currently at Real Madrid, one of the biggest clubs in the world. And so it goes back to that conversation that we have time and time again about players that take time to acclimate themselves, to, to, to find their role, to find their, yeah. their place. Not if you are a real deal, and he is the real deal. And this guy, now he's, a, he's in a position which he has been featured by Carlo Ancelotti, and I suppose that's the genius of Carlos, uh, Carlo Ancelotti, if you will, that is saying, you know what? This guy can do things that all these other midfielders are not going to be capable of doing, and if we are able to find him in advanced positions, he's going to score goals for us. But even Carlo Ancelotti would have to admit he wouldn't have thought he would be this good this quickly. He is an incredible talent and a talent that you're, that you're seeing getting better and better and better. And the scary part, again, I go back to it, he's only 20 years old, so you can only imagine what he's going to be at Real Madrid. Uh, so from a Napoli point of view, Gab, obviously they'll be disappointed by the defeat, but they'll be taking some positives from the manner they, they held themselves against Real Madrid throughout this tie. Yeah, Rudy Garcia came out afterwards and said, you know, he thought maybe a, a draw would have been uh, a fair result. I, I'm not sure uh, I agree with him. Um, but certainly, I, I think the team set up well. I think they were conditioned by the fact that, obviously, they're, they're probably missing their, their first choice uh, center halves. Although, mind you, <clears throat> so were Real Madrid. Um, but, uh, you know, in the end, maybe a little fortuitous with the uh, with the penalty. Equally, you don't expect Lorenzo to be gifting a ball like that. Uh, I, I do wonder, again, listening to Craig there on, on the Bellingham goal, it's not just Ambon Guisa. I think it's also Ostergaard getting beaten one-on-one. -on -one. You know, there, there's a reason why uh, he doesn't play regularly at, at Napoli. So little things like that, but <clears throat> they were in there. They, they had a shot at the end, perhaps, to, to, to turn it around. Uh, Osimhen turned up. Looks Sounds like looks like he... He put, um, you know, all the nonsense from, from last week behind him. Um, so, yeah, I think you feel pretty good performance-wise. Uh, can I say something about Napoli in the attacking half? You see Osimhen out-jumping Rudiger yeah. regularly. And that's surprising to see because Rudiger, we think of him as an athletic guy. But Osimhen is just dunking on him all the time. If you're Caravascalia and I'm Osimhen... I'm saying to you, listen, stop with the touch, 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 and then a little combination pass that amounts to nothing. No, just swing the ball in, float it to the back post, and I'll go get it. I'll go get it. Just send him the Athletic Madrid game. Yes. Say, look, yes. <laughs> That's right. Just float it over there, and I'll go dunk on him, and we'll score goals. Why are we just playing this little game when we have such athleticism and such explosive movement inside the 18-yard box? I just don't understand.